Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. Hey, we're wrapping up 2 Timothy. We have two more devotions in this book and um, just some, you know, autobiographical pieces that the Apostle Paul is going to be um, speaking to Timothy and some really, really practical ones. But even in this, uh, like we're going to read today a verse and it's just going to sound so practical, but it is, you know, filled. It is chock full of meaning. And so if you have your Bibles open to 2 Timothy chapter 4, today we're going to read in verse 11. And I'm going to pray for us and we'll jump into the scripture. Father, thank you for this word today that's just so unexpectedly encouraging. It's amazing that there's just so much that's um, built into this very simple statement that Paul gives. And so, Father, I pray that you'd really encourage those of us who just may feel like we've done something in our life that's disqualified us and um, that there's not a second chance. God, remind us that there always is in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Paul says to Timothy, only Luke is with me. Get Mark. Get Mark. And bring him with you, for he is useful to me. This is huge. For he is useful to me for ministry. So Paul is like, it's just crazy. This is, you know, a topic for another time. But Paul's talking about how basically everybody had abandoned him. You know, he was making his first defense before uh, the Roman government, probably before Caesar, and all those people that should have been there supporting the Apostle Paul completely abandoned him. And he's going to um, address that issue um, in verse 17, how that rolled out for him. We'll share that later. But Paul is asking um, Timothy to call on some particular people that were important to Paul to come to his aid. One was um, already with him, and that was Luke. The other one was Mark. And who is Mark? Well, Mark is John Mark. Uh, Mark here is the author of the gospel according to Mark. And if you're familiar with your Bible, you know that Paul had a very turbulent relationship with John Mark. I mean, initially it did it did not go well. So John Mark was the nephew of Barnabas, and Barnabas was the brother of Mary, who was a prominent Christian in Jerusalem. She was wealthy. Some people believe that um, her home was the home where the Last Supper um, was experienced by the disciples, that John Mark, uh, who was her son, would have been present for that, would have been one of the people serving um, in the Last Supper, that John Mark was actually present uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane when Christ was betrayed, his uncle was Barnabas, and Barnabas had a very close relationship to the Apostle Paul. In fact, it was Barnabas who went and got Paul um, and brought him down to Antioch because there were both Jews and Gentiles in the church at Antioch, and Paul had this unique uh, capacity to minister to both, or, or so Barnabas thought that had been totally untried at that point. Well, God stirred their hearts to go on that first missionary journey in Acts chapter 13. John Mark went with them, And then along the way, by the time they got to Asia Minor, John Mark bailed. And we're not necessarily sure about all the details, but it would seem that um, things got difficult and he left in such a way where Paul felt abandoned by John Mark. And all of this, you know, came to bear when Paul and Barnabas were going to go on their second missionary journey. I think Barnabas probably suggested, hey, well, let's bring John Mark. And Paul was like, there's no way. Absolutely no way. You know, that kid abandoned us and we just can't trust him. Barnabas was like, no, we're bringing him. And the Bible says there was a sharp division that arose between the two of them. So they split company. Barnabas took John Mark and Paul brought Silas. And that was it, right? I mean, that really was it. Until later on, we discover that Paul and John Mark, Mark here, had been reconciled. And it's fascinating what, what Paul says here. Paul says bring John Mark or bring Mark to me, he is useful for ministry. Like that whole piece of brokenness and failure um, that could have defined Mark for the rest of his Christian experience had been addressed and dealt with. Paul's heart had softened uh, to John Mark where he was willing to be compassionate and to give him another chance. And I just wanna simply say to you today, uh, number one, You know, if there's been failure in your 
experience as a Christian, maybe like in serving in some capacity or something didn't go the way that you thought it should have gone, um, or there was just a really, really bad experience. You know, the tendency sometimes is to live um, your life defined by that bad experience, and that does not have to be the case. God is greater than that. God is the God of second chances and third chances. The fact is this, we all make mistakes. There have been so many failures in my life as a minister, as a child of God, as a leader even. And God has used those times to shape me and to mold me. Uh, and when you place those failures in his hands, he can turn them around and use them for good. Don't listen to the lie today that says that God is done with you because he is, he's not, he never is. The second thing today is this, don't just write people off. Like really resist the tendency to just absolve yourself of people that maybe have failed you. Now there's a process in this. There's a process of forgiveness and reconciliation and then, you know, learning to to work together again and reestablish trust. Like that does take time, but we never want to be in a place where we just absolve ourselves of people and wash our hands and disregard them and turn our back on them when in fact God may be desiring to reunite us for some divine purpose. And that really is the beauty of the body of Christ, you know, that, that attitude of absolving ourselves of people is prevalent in the world. It should not be in the church. Like it's just an unexpected, you know, treasure in God's word that through the simple statement of Paul to Timothy, we have a picture, we have a glimpse of what God is able to do when we give our situations and our hearts to him. He is always the God of second and third chances. So live that out in your life today and live that out towards others. We hope this podcast has ministered to you. If it has, we welcome you to rate it or leave a review. If you would like to stay connected with Pastor Derek Nider or find many more teachings, please visit awakenlv.org. Click visit and then choose Pastor Derek Nider. These links are also in this episode's description. Until next time, God bless you.